Sorry about that. Can't catch a break. We'll see what it says here. <laughs> Should say Brewers. We so could start over. Could I come out again? No. Is the announcer for, what does it say there? You got it. The Milwaukee Braves. That's Shirley. Well, Shirley's not a bad no. <laughs> That's crazy, Shirley. Shirley's all right. I'm sorry, I should have picked that right no. up. Right up. No problem, Johnny. Let's... Well, you've been with a lot of teams in your life, haven't you? Yeah. Can you remember, give me, give me as fast as you can, all the teams you've ever played with. Braves, Cardinals, Phillies, and the Braves again. Then in June, I was with... <laughs> But you weren't always with major league teams, were you? Weren't no, you, I... Weren't, didn't you spend some time in the minor leagues? Oh, I was in the minor leagues a long time, Jim. Yeah. A long time. I love the minor leagues. Really? I love the minor leagues. <laughs> well, why is that? That's low pay, low meal money. You know, you yeah. never worry about, you know, no IRS people around you. It's great. Yeah. You know, 325 a month. That was tops. Really? I pocketed about 75 bucks a month. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was easy. How would you like to be out there playing baseball in this weather? On, on a day like today, and have well, to play baseball, 100 and 101. I used to pay, you know, these kind of games, I used to stay pretty much flickered up, you know, so I couldn't, <laughs> you know, couldn't bother me that much, you know. I miss, I miss the show. Somebody said that you were in uh, NBC's uh, Comedy Salute to Baseball. Was that prior to the All-Star Game or what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The night before the All-Star Game, yeah. they had a uh, Comedy Salute to Baseball hosted by Billy Crystal. Really right. great, great guy. and. Uh, what they did on the show, Johnny, and uh, I think a lot of this credit has to go to you because you're the guy who started all this stuff. Uh -huh. They uh, polled the country. <clears throat> During that special, they punched up a 900 number and uh, polled the country as to whether I belonged in the Hall of Fame or not. <laughs> and uh, they received uh, 267,000 calls and 84% said yes. That you should... Sixteen voted no, so those are the ones we got to go after. Yeah. You mean to tell me 84% of the people thought you should have be in the... That I should be in the Hall of Fame. You know, there are a few guys on the show, and these are a couple of guys that I thought were good friends of mine. Pat Boone. Yes. Voted no on the show. Steve Garvey voted no. No. Jamie Farr voted yes. So right. Shows you, you know. That's right. Guy knows everything. There's no yeah. bad sports. <laughs> How many votes do you have to have? Now, of course, the fans don't decide. Well, I don't, I don't even isn't know if it, I want to go in now, John. <laughs> but isn't, isn't it a group of your peers? I mean, if you have any. It's writers. Uh, writers. <laughs> writers. It's well, writers. Well, they're, yeah, they're a pretty select group, aren't they? They're, they're tough. Well, a lot of them never saw me play. That's my problem. I never thought of that. Well, a lot of my teammates never saw me play I'm either. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that goes both ways. But, uh, <laughs> No, it was a, uh, it was just a poll conducted, and the, uh, the money uh, uh, that was uh, paid mm -hmm. uh, by the folks that called went to a charity, and it was great. It well, was that's a nice uh, idea. But a lot of my stuff, they're, now they're starting to bang on my door, you know, they want some of my equipment and stuff. Yeah. And, so. Did you save memorabilia from your playing days? Uh, a lot of it is in uh, Cooperstown now. Uh, a bat that I used uh, is at a uh, filling station there. They use it for a jack to pull one. <laughs> I believe that. Most, most, of the stuff, uh, most of the stuff was burned. They burned it up there. And I uh, see. Just to make sure that I wouldn't be there. But, uh, <laughs> well, they, they obviously know what they're doing. But you were the guy, really, that was responsible for a lot of it. The Mr. Baseball, you started it right yeah, here. Yeah, that's true. And uh, your very first credit appearance. Credit is very due. first appearance. I, yeah. I dubbed you, unfortunately, at that time, Mr. Mr. Baseball. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's kind of stuck. Last time you were here, we started mm -hmm. talking. I don't know where we got into it. You do the play-by-play. -play. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about how guys have to zero in and cut everything out of their mind except what's happening on the field mm -hmm. to make, make the calls mm -hmm. and create some problems sometimes. Yeah, I, when I was here the last time, we were talking about a, uh, a broadcaster in Chicago by the name of Bob Elson, who That's I thought guy. was really one of the greatest. And uh, Bob Elson had a habit of, of, of doing play-by-play, -play, never missed a pitch, no matter what was happening, uh, about people coming into the booth, and he would go on to the play-by-play -play and, and talk about these people, but at the end of the inning, the inning was over and he'd never tell you who they were. You know, I mean, he went through this whole thing about how great they were, he hadn't seen them in 30 years, and then when the inning was over, he wouldn't tell you who they were. Well, thanks and salon to our old friends. So, <clears throat> I thought about, uh, you know, doing a play-by-play -play inning as Bob Elson, but uh, in a little different vein. And he broadcast for the uh, <clears throat> Chicago White Sox. And in this particular game, the White Sox hadn't beaten the Yankees in five years. They had the bases loaded, uh, two outs in the ninth inning. I mean, uh, bases loaded, nobody out in the ninth right. inning. And the Yankees leading two to one. 
And this is the way I thought he would do the play-by-play -play with right. a news bulletin coming in. <laughs> so the Yankees are leading here by a score of 2-1. to one. The White Sox have the bases loaded. And gosh, we've really got a great chance to win. Jim Landis now the batter on the first pitch is a strike. We have a bulletin in from our newsroom here. One strike on Jim Landis, bases loaded. Boy, if Jimmy can knock one in here, the White Sox can snap this long losing streak. Here's the pitch, and Landis pops it up. Easy play. Boyer at third. He's got it. And there is one man out. Well, this news bulletin that we have here, here is a swing and a miss by Aparicio. <laughs> one strike to little Louie. Boy, a base hit here as I said a long fly ball could tie this ball game. The next offering to Aparicio, a swing and a lazy pop foul right side, should be an easy play for Scourin. And there are two men out here in the White Sox ninth. Well, now it's up to Sherman Lauder. And our engineer tells me that I should get this on the air. Here is Lawler standing in now, and <laughs> the stretch by Whitey Ford, and the first offering is a ball, the one outside. Well, it seems the Russians have launched four ICBM missiles headed toward the Chicagoland area. Here's a ball down low on Lawler, and the count is even at one and one. One ball and one strike to Lawler. The bases remain loaded, and the White Sox now with a chance to win this game with a base hit by Sherman. Here is the next offering. It's a ball down low and outside. And we understand some of these missiles have started to hit the Chicagoland area. Here's a swing and a miss. <laughs> you know, as I look out over the right field area and see the bombs bursting out there, the thing that comes to mind would be a big base hit by Sherman Lawler. <laughs> that could certainly win it for the White Sox. Here is the next pitch to Sherman, and he popped it up. Easy play for Gil McDougal. And the White Sox will lose again. Now, for some of you fans, some of the escape routes that you might want to look at out of the Chicago land area, I-94 West seems to be your best route. And if you're headed past Comiskey Park, you might want to stop in for the up-and-coming series against the Boston Red Sox and get your tickets early. So the final score this afternoon, the White Sox lose to New York 2-1. to one. Don't forget, Sunday afternoon of promotion day here at Comiskey Park. Boy, there's some big bombs bursting out there now. <laughs> Sunday afternoon, afternoon, Sunday afternoon here at Comiskey Park will be Jersey Day. All youngsters 14 and under receive a free cow. So long, everybody. Oh, it's dead. Oh, my. Oh, what a idea. That's a funny idea. You mentioned youngsters. You, you've got kids, don't you? Yeah, I have four of them. Yeah. When you were being traded from team to team, and you travel. Mm -hmm. How did your kids react to that? They wanted to stay home. Yeah? They didn't want to go with me. Oh, my kids used to... I like after a ball game, uh, they'd want to ride home with a different player. <laughs> <laughs> they play that... Uh, all teams have this. They play that annual father-son-daughter game. Sure. You know? My kids would always want to wear a different number. They wouldn't oh, wear that's... mine. <laughs> my little guy, he had, a, he had a great saying when I'd come home, you know, after a game. Another day, another dollar for it. That's another collar. Jesus. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. We gotta take a break, but we'll be right back. Stay where you are. <laughs>